קצרה. רוח השם תחם בגן עדן, תהיה נשמתם צרורה בצור החיים. אמן. Thank you. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, בורא פרי האדמה. So nice that the Jews, Jewish people always have excuse why to eat and why to drink. Why? Because they have berachot. I'm not really, really drinking or eating because I like the food. Because I have to make berachah. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שהכל נהיה בדברו. אמן. Yesterday was the Yeshua of my father. It was my be, Rahmat Kuna. It was my be, uh, not only one of the biggest Yeshua. It was a Yeshua in, a, in, a, in a, not only different ways. It was maybe the only Yeshua in the community that all the rabbis from the community appears. And any synagogues that was exist in the community, any synagogues, <laughs> or Natan, Bet Gavriel, uh, uh, Jamaica State, Jamaica Mistakes, any synagogues you want. It was a representative of a rabbi, Rabbi Amino, uh, uh, Rabbi Nasir. All the rabbis came. It was a speeches from 8 to 8, uh, 20 until 9.45. Each rabbi spoke. It was incredible ways to make a show. Be'emet, and, it, and you know the food was buffet. I made beautiful food. I mean, from the Miken, Oshpelo, Sevo, whatever you need. Oshpelo, Gush Gush. I gave the Bukharan what the Bukharan need. But it was a buffet. It didn't cost so much money. But I met it was compared to what normal people spend, it was maybe 10%. 10% from a regular show. 10%. And Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, was maybe one of the most effective because the rabbis that came, each one of them, was God gift. But I met God gift. And I, the, the purpose behind it was to have unity in our community. Stop with this politics, stop with this argument and fighting and whatever. You know, let's just be one community, one family, one people. Baruch Hashem. If this is so, this is the secret of my father. My father was always a peace, peace person, a peacemaker. My father was always a person that loved every Jew so much that uh, one of the stories that I remember that I heard doing the Shiva, I never knew it. We had a neighbor by the name, this is my brother, Rav Ronen. Almighty God, we give Rav Ronen long and healthy and happy life. Let us say amen. To raise his children, the Torah, the Chupa, all the Marasim Tovim. Rabbi Ronen starts, listen to this, the power of Tefina and the blessing of the Tzaddik. Rabbi Ronen starts, I believe, five years after me to have children. When I had three children, he had none. And then he came to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And he said, Rabbi Shimon, if you're going to give me a child, I will call him Shimon. His first baby, his name is what? Shimon Chaim. Chaim is life. Shimon corresponds to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Five years later. Avner, how many children I have? You know me too good. How many children I have? Five. beautiful. How many children my brother have? Nine children. A minute that Rabbi Shimon opened the gate, he opened the gate. Chutzpah, he came. He started five years later. I said, you know, at least when you're coming in, you have to let me know. You have to ask permission. I'm older from you. This is the young generation. He moved in and he starts. I told my wife, listen, you're sleeping. What exactly happened? No, not. This is another chutzpah. Don't put salt in open room. Mula Badanov. Mula Badanov, don't make Balaga Jagamazi. Don't make. You make it, Mrs. Badano, your husband is making it. It's not too late for him. Okay. <laughs> he said, number 10, Chudachat. He's going to give me some. Now I need to pray for number 10, you know? Well, she asked him when he ate his sandak. He said, Chutzpah Achat, she had had five years after that, and he had caught me in a big one. Chutzpah Achat, she had never had his sandak. Okay, I said, hey, Mr. Baris, you said it. Okay, here. We have enough witnesses. We have enough witnesses. Kaiko, I'm not waiting for number 11. I was waiting for 99. You're going to beat for it, Rabbi. How many boys do we have? How many boys do we have? Six boys? What wow? And I didn't get some duck. What wow? You're right, Rabbi. Why are you telling me wow? 
Why did you get that one said that? Six times, why did you know? And you tell me, wow, what, what, wow? I'm sorry, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm alive, I'm alive. Why, my Rabbi, we are alive. Baruch Hashem. Ladies and gentlemen, we start. Um, today I'm going to start with a chidush, a unique chidush that I held Shabbat and I was dancing about it. Out of respect to Emmanuel and his families, I will give them a chidush that he's going to dance, not only now in each one of you, until the rest of the year and maybe forever. Amen. If you're going to know this chidush, listen to this. You know, they said, and we spoke about it once, uh, Ribi, we spoke about how important it is to do kiddush when? You remember once we gave a whole lecture about doing kiddush? When, when? When is the best time to do kiddush? Eh? No, you don't remember? Why, why, why? Friday night? Who said? Badalov, Badalov. One Badalov in the end, one Badalov in the beginning, we cover everything. Now, Badalov said, Friday night. Friday night is the most important time to say kiddush. By the way, uh, no, this is a different point. No. In Chabad, in Ashkenaz, in Hasidim, even children next to the parents, they do Kiddush. Every child is doing Kiddush. You have ten children above Bar Mitzvah, all of them is doing Kiddush. Not Mary, they do Kiddush. Friday night, the Gemara said, anyone that do Kiddush on Friday night, become a partner with the Almighty God. Shutaf Shel Bore Olam Reshit. Avner, if you want to become a partner of God and the, and the creation of the world, even if somebody invites you to Shabbat, you know what you do? He said, no offense, can I do my own Kiddush? Do not skip Kiddush Friday night. Friday night, when you do Kiddush, you consider to be what? A partner of God. Now, to become a partner is much greater from becoming a child in a certain way. Because child, as much that you love him, how many times your children ask you certain things that you always say yes? Most of the time we say, <coughs> he ask you for candy, he ask you for this, he ask you for shoes, he ask you for phones. Ah, but can you buy me a new phone? You say no. Most of the time when they ask you something, you say no, even though... Listen, you say no because you love them, but you say no. Can you say no to your partner? If your partner wants to do something, can you say no? This is his money. He can do whatever he wants, right? So a partner, in a way, in a certain area, is much stronger from being a son. We should listen to this. It was once. But don't partners have to decide together? With your own money? Same After you, No, no. I'm talking about the money that you get. A money that you get, you share. And, and, and by a minute you have to, but you have much more power. Even though that you have to decide together, you have much more power to influence the opinion of your friends. A son cannot push his father, especially in our community that we respect the parents too much. Bani and Arab, Baruch Hashem, Kibbut Urim is the greatest mitzvah. We don't argue with the parents. Abba says something, we follow. Now, a partner, how many times you have argument with partners and you push to one direction and you push to another direction? But being a partner, you have a power to influence. If this is so, it was once a rabbi, Ham Kaikov, you can learn the story. It was once a rabbi, Rabbi Shushan shared it. Beautiful. It was once, it is often to be mentioned. It was once a rabbi that um, he had a, a person that he made money. He had maybe one million dollar in cash in his bank account. It's nice, but it's not a lot of money. One million dollars is not a big money. The rabbi came to him and he said, listen, now the guy is open every Shabbat. Every Shabbat he open. He doesn't want to close the store. How can you convince the guy to close the store? He doesn't want to close. He came to Shura Torah, nothing. What do you do? Listen to how brilliant the rabbi was. The rabbi came to him and said, Moshe, Moshe, I see I had a, a great future ahead of you. You're going to become, not one million, you're going to become, become a whale, not a shark, a whale. You know, a one million is considered to be fish. Today, one million is nothing. You know, five to 10, 15 million, you're already sharks. 50 to 100, well. He said, this year you're going to be a well. He said, what did I have to do, Rabbi? How can I be rich? His eyes open like this. What can I do? The Rabbi told him, I'm going to give you advice. I want to become your partner. The guy said, wow, Rabbi, the big Rabbi, the biggest Rabbi in New York, New York want to become my partner? Tomorrow. What did I have to do to make your partner today? But I don't know if I'm coming and ask you. I know you. Today, Rabbi. 
He came in, but the rabbi told one condition, we have to bring a lawyer. This is not a joke. We are partners, we are partners. He said, okay. He brought a lawyer. He said, Rabbi, the lawyer sit down. How many percent do you want? So the rabbi said, I'm not greedy. I don't have big eyes. Partnership, 15%, one five. 15% only. The guy said 50%. And Rabbi, you're going to pray for me all day long. And you're going to study Torah for me all day long. And all the sugar Torah that you give in Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, it's all. All that filled, all the. The, the, the few me, everything is me. He said yes. Rabbi, 15%. They signed the contract, they signed it. Two witnesses. Two witnesses after they signed. The rabbi stood up, they took the, the copy. Now we have a proof that is legally partners. He said, now you're going to have to close the Shabbat. He said, why? He said, because if you divide 100% to seven days, how much is every day? 15%. My percent, I want to be closed. <laughs> Can you tell him no? Can you tell him no? Before he give him lecture, speech, Shabbat, Shabbat, nobody Shabbat. My business, now he becomes his partner. You cannot say no to partner. My 15%, I can do whatever I want. Becoming a partner of God, you can force God to give you whatever you want. Anything you want. So what do you have to do? So listen to this. Why when you do Kiddush on Friday night, this Friday everybody here is going to do Kiddush. It's so important. What is so unique? You're going to hear something that you're going to jump. You know the same way that you get in $10,000 profit? You're smiling all day long. Right? Hashem, Hashem. When I get Kiddush Torah, when I get something inside that I never want, when I get something that excites me, and four o'clock in the morning I'm singing, Hashem, why is why is okay to dance over money, and it's not okay to dance over Torah? Why when I'm dancing everybody look, Rabbi, it's strange. Why are you dancing? Why is money? When you're happy, when you're making money, why I'm asking you, you strange? So the same way David Amir said, Tovli Torah at Picha, Malfez have a chesef. God, your Torah is better from all the money in the world, and all the diamonds and all the gold. Nothing is equal. I want you, gentlemen, ladies, I want you to leave this class. To taste the taste of Torah. To enjoy when you study. To enjoy when you keep Shabbat. To enjoy when you put the fini. Not to be stuck with Shabbat. To look Shabbat like an enemy. You see, it was a rabbi, one of the biggest rabbis in America. What's the name of the biggest rabbi in America? Allah Hawa is. Allah Hawa. What's the name? Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. Anyone here that doesn't know, consider to be ignorant. Mechanat that I said. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein is the name the biggest names in United States history from the time that Columbus discovered America, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein was the biggest rabbi in Anacha. Now, he had two students. One of them, both of them had ten children. One of them, all his children left religion. None of them stay religious. All of them went off the derech. The other guy, all of them is religious. Haredi, Mitpalelim, connected, study Torah. You know, People start to claim, I don't understand, Rabbi, this is your student. How come this guy, all his children left religion, went off the derech, and this guy, all his children religious? They are both religious, they are both Haredi, what exactly? Listen to what Rabbi Moshe Feinstein said. You know what's the difference? Fifty years ago, if you've been in America, today, everybody can keep Shabbat. There's no problem to keep Shabbat. No problem to close the business in Shabbat. Sometimes it's even embarrassment to open it. In 47, if you open the store in Shabbat, everybody look at you like a goy. You feel embarrassed because everybody's closing. But it was a time 50 years ago that nobody fired you because of discrimination. But if you didn't work in Shabbat, you never had a job. The condition and the jobs, it was you have to work in Shabbat. You're not working, no problem. You don't have a job. These two guys, religious, went in to find a job. They find the jobs. Friday, they came in and they said, this in, we cannot walk. I said, okay, you're just being fired. Both of them got fired, and both of them got fired for the sake of God, for keeping Shabbat. One of them came home, and his face is Tisha B'Av. <coughs> I look like he's going to jump from the Varazano Bridge, from the Brooklyn Bridge. I always said, if you jump, you jump from, Brooklyn, from Golden Bridge. You finish it, you finish it right. You're going in, you make selfie, you see the view of uh, Los Angeles, California, America. And then you finish. Don't, don't finish it from Brooklyn Bridge. It's no life, you know. Don't uh, finish nice. No. This guy look like... Oh. <laughs> it can be dangerous. It's life. We are alive. Okay. Now, I'm only, you know, it's only jokes, gentlemen. Now, uh, this guy looked depression. 
I had no food for Shabbat. The children look at them, Abba, what exactly happened? Don't ask because of Shabbat. You know, only because of Shabbat we have no business. The whole week is depressed. The whole month is depressed. The whole year is depressed. Now, the children looked at the father and they saw him being religious and losing money, but depressed. So they, they made one plus one. What? Religious bring depression. Who want to be depressed? All of them left religion. The other guy got fired for Shabbat. He came in and he told the mother, call all the children, call them. Take ice cream outside, take ice cream. What exactly happened? You win the lottery, shh, secret, I have to tell you secret. All the children, ice cream. He said, give them watermelon to make baracha, bore Give them uh, the, uh, uh, grapes, ayats. Give them uh, cake, cookies, cakes. They eat, they start to give them hospital, hospital. They start to dance, shalom, man. He said, Abba, today is Wednesday. Why are you singing? He said, He said, Don't worry, I'm going to tell you in a second. They looked at him and said, Abba, what exactly happened? He said, You don't understand. I just got fired because of Shabbat. What is the good we had that we sacrifice our job for the sake of God and he's dancing? They saw a father that is broke, but a happy man. Children want to be happy, children that doesn't want to be rich. They think, you know why children is after money? Because they think that money will lead them to rich, to happiness. So they think that a good car is going to give them, and a good watch, this is what we teach them. <coughs> but children do not care about money. If you're going to give a child a hundred dollar or a lollipop, what is going to choose? You're going to give him a one thousand dollar or a lollipop, what is going to choose? You know how many lollipop you can buy in one thousand dollar? The whole store of lollipop. <laughs> No, but children doesn't figure out. I need Lani Pipe now. I want to be happy now. When you say a religious man, you come coming home in Shabbat and you're singing and dancing. Your child look at you and say, wow, this is what religious. I want to be religious. I want to follow my father's footsteps. But if he see you putting the filin and making sour face, like Rahmat Kuna, God forbid, somebody die. It's like you're an avel, you're a mourner. Why are you putting the in? I don't know, I got stuck with the in. I got stuck in the synagogue. I got stuck in life. I got stuck here, I got stuck. Who want to be stuck? The first message is, be happy. If this is so, I will teach you today why Shabbat. Come, guy, come listen to this. Mordechai, listen, 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 well. You see, people think that creation was easy. When we read in the Torah, the six days of creation look like, the first six days, Creation was fast, God created, it was smooth, it was smooth, and at the end of the week, it was Shabbat, right? This is what everybody here in the room believed that the creation of God was smooth, right? It was no problem. Anyone can figure out if it was any problem in the six days of creation. When is the only problem that we had? When is the only problem that we have? When? When? Beautiful. When Adam made the sin, it's the only problem. Except that six days is smooth. I will teach you today that every day was a mistake. Every day God had obstacles. Nothing went smooth. From the first day until the six days, it was always balagan. One word. The creation was balagan. Balagan. A mess. I will teach you, I will teach you that. The first day, what God created in the first day? Light. Tell me, when God created light, no, no, God created light. Let us be a light. Tell me, the sun was exist or not? No. no. Which day the sun came? Wednesday. So what's mean light? Which light? If there's no sun, which light? Which light was? There's no sun. He separated light. Ladies and gentlemen, the light was unusual light. It was a holy light. God made the most beautiful and the strongest light in the world. He created in the first days. He realized that the light is too holy. You know what he did? He took it away and he put it in a safe deposit. He kept it at Sadiqim at that level. Only righteous people in the world to come. Or when Mashiach is going to come. Meaning the first day was already a mistake. What's the mistakes? He created something and he took it away. Beautiful, right? This is the first, the first obstacle in the first day. When exactly we can see this light during the year? Once in a year, when exactly we can see it? Emmanuel, you can answer these questions. Being Talmud Chacham. And which days in a year we can see this light? 
once in a year. I don't get which days. No. Hanukkah. Hanukkah for the eight days. They always ask you to look in the light, to look in the light, sitting down for half an hour, look in the light. What do you have to see in the light? I see people like this. They move their eyes, moving like light, jumping. Suddenly the wife, usually she look at you, she focus. After Hanukkah, she's not focusing anymore. My husband, where are you? Why? Because their eyes become like a light. What is this? Why are you looking in the light? You know what the sages said? According to the Kabbalah, this light represents Oraganus. Oraganus is the hidden light. That light, once in a year only. Now, second days. What God created in the second days? Gentlemen, fast. What God created in the second days? For the Rav, we are in different parashah. We are in the time. How do you get here? Mishpatim already. We finished the Torah. Why are you going back? Eh? What a beautiful. Mrs. Barayev said the mother, out of respect to Avner, she was right. Avner will sponsor the dinner for his wife, and they're going to go out with Bezat Hashim. <laughs> I got your dinner, Mrs. Barayev. You see? You're welcome. Avner, be generous. Generous. Listen to this. God created, he didn't only create the water. The world was full of water. What God did? Separation. He separated between the lower water to the upper water. What exactly happened? Balagan. You know what the word? Machloket. The lower water complained, God, why, we, why you put us down and not up? We want to be up. We want to be close to you. Fight. And the second day is already fight. Balagan. Any person that come, in, come to the world on Monday, Either he's going to be a Talmud Chacham that like to argue, or either he's going to be a Janganuzi. One of them. You know, when people do in Janganuzi, if you're going to check in the calendar, they came to the world Monday. <laughs> yeah? We're going to get, we're going to get. Se- no, no, no. Second day, it was created the vision between my and your name to my Ah, Machloket. Argument between the water above. You see, the water above is the rain and everything else. The one that under is the sea, the, the ocean, jacuzzi, sauna, all this balagan is the water under. Now, uh, we divide between the water up, okay. Number three, Emmanuel, what exactly happened in number three? God creates? Cash. Cash, anything to do with cash. What do what they have to do with cash on Tuesday? What do they have to do with cash? No, 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 land, land. The three. The first time that somebody didn't listen to God, it was not on Fridays. Friday is the second time. Tuesday is the fourth. Sunday, God already made something that he had to take away. Monday, Janganuzi, Machloket. Tuesday, Balagan, look, look at the creation. Nobody knew it. Tuesday, suddenly, God is telling the three, it's spring or spring. Meaning, you have to create the, the, the tree and the fruit and the same taste. This is the grapes. This is the eggs. Right? This is the, whatever, bench. Bench. Bench? How do you call it? Bench. Bench, branch, branch, right? Abner, can you eat the branch? Can you eat the branch? Yes. I love it. Was it Monday for sure? It was good, but you see, watch out, watch out. Maybe it was good. It was good. You respond, Abner, he responds smart, brilliant, and he responds. Why, well, you have protection. Restaurant for him. Uh, Ribby and his wife also. Abner, was a restaurant. Yes. Now, um, you see, you cannot. The commandment of God, when God asks the tree to make a tree, is that this one and this one will be exactly the same taste. And you can eat both of them. What did the tree did? It's or supreme. He decides in his own not to listen to God. He creates a branch and he creates a fruit. Not in the same taste. He said, if I'm going to create both of them in the same taste, what's going to happen? Nothing is going to be left. So we have to create something that the day was always going to be exist. So he came with his own opinion against the will of God. Tuesday, already somebody is not listening. Wednesday. What exactly happened on Wednesday? 
God created the sun and the moon. Balagan. Second makhluket. What is the makhluket? The moon to the sun. The, same the moon is coming to God and said, Who is the leader? Who is the leader? Why we have the same sight? Why are we both light? Why are we both shining? I am the main driver or who is the main driver? Like a husband and wife that always fighting. Who is the one in control? Most of our fight is really who is in control. If you're going to check the source of all the fight between husband and wife is, who is in control? Who is running the show? The moon or the sun? If you Bukhari and Islam are broken. If you're Arab, it's a different story. Okay. Silent is golden. But this is the fight. Now, what God did? God said, you know what, moon? You come to complain? Shrink the moons. He gave a, a stars, but still shrink it. Meaning, balagan. Number five. What exactly happened in number five? What God created in number five? The, the fish. fish and, and in the fish, he created the biggest fish that exists. How do you call this biggest fish? Yeah. The whale. The whale, whale. The whale, he had a wife. His wife was big like him. You know how big was the whale? The Gemara said that the whale was 20% of the whole world. 20%. One whale? One whale. Now, his wife, another 20%. This is before pregnancy. Imagine as if nine months, she's going. Now, the wife of the whale, she put this balagan that the woman put in the eyes, and she looked at the husband, she's doing him. <laughs> I want to get married with you, Balagan, Balagan, I want to do Jaganuri. Now, the whale got excited, and he wants to come back, he wants to come too close to his wife. But God saw it, God said, oh, no, no, it's a mistake, why? If he is 20%, and she is 20%, they're going to bring another child 20%, the world is complete. What God did, he put salt in the wife of the whale, and he preserved it, Latid Lavo for Tzadikim in the time of Mashiach. Meaning he killed the wife because the wife uh, is the only one that can provide more children. This way is not going to be more children. Do you see that? Thursday God creates and he had to take again, he had to take something that he created away in order that the world. Friday everybody knows the Balagan. God created Adam and Eve and one hour later they made a sin. Do you see what exactly happened? Six days of creation Six days of obstacles. Nothing went smooth. What I'm telling you, you will never hear in any other place. Except the BJCC at Minato floor. The place to be. The place to be. you're so lucky that you came here tonight to this show. Now, why is it important for us to know? But that even though God was full of balagan the whole week, when God came to Shabbat, what did he say? Why not fash? He rest. He was relaxed. He was happy. Nothing influenced him from the six days of Balagan to Shabbat. Shabbat came. Any person that come to Shabbat and he's doing Kiddush and he's happy and he's relaxed and he's singing Shalom Aleichem Malachem Oh, he's standing, he's looking at his wife and he's doing this way. And he's singing Eshet in not to look in your, in your mother's pictures. To look in your wife. <laughs> don't look and don't make balagan. Some people, they put the big pictures in the wall with the mother. Eshet <laughs> No. To look in your wife and to say Eshet You know what? And to be relaxed and not to have influence of business. Do you know what exactly happened to you? You become partner with the Almighty God. And you know what's the privilege of being a partner? Anything you want next week, you will receive. Money-wise, health, happiness, shalom bite, customer, briut, uh, good news, whatever you need. A business deal that got stuck. You tell God on Shabbat and Saturday night, my partner, please, I demand, boshet, boshet salamat, I demand that this business deal, this house, will be sold. That I don't, I'm not asking, I'm a partner. A partner have power. 
You know how you know that apart the Rav Parwa? It was once a daughter of one of the big rabbis of Tzadikim. I don't remember really his names. I don't know, maybe the Rebbe Merujin, the Rujin Rebbe. His daughter came to him when her grandchild fighting for life. She said, Babo, how come you don't fight for your own grandchild life? Why are you not fighting for it? Why are you so quiet and you're not praying? Listen to the answer that the rabbi gave her. A brilliant answer. He said, my dear daughter, I'm going to teach you something. How many people is bringing a child to the world? How many people is bringing a child? Two. two. To only two people? Three. The Gemara said three. Who is the three? It's not people. No, how many partners? I'm sorry, how many partners? How many partners bringing? Husband and wife and God. Beautiful, right? Three. Three partners. How many percent each one of them have? Beautiful. The rabbi told the listen, as long as you and your husband do not agree that this child will leave this world, God have no choice by leaving him here alive. Because you are two against one. My job. Partnership cannot go against. No, this is the Rebbe Morujin. I was kind when I saw it. You know how many times when I see ch parents that fighting for their children's life and they come to me and say, Rabbi, what exactly we can do? Very simple. Pray to Hashem all day long, you and your wife, and do not even agree that this child will leave this world. God have no choice. Because two of right one, you're not coming to him like children anymore. You come into him like a partner and majority partners. Majority. You are 66% against 33. God, you're right. But we have majority. When you keep Shabbat, when you do Kiddush, when you rest, when you're happy in Shabbat, when you don't argue, when you don't fight, when you don't give business, business that happened last week to influence your Shabbat, you know what exactly happened? You become what? A partner of God. The same way that God had six days of Balagan, six days of obstacles, and he came to Shabbat and rest. The same ways. Tell me, was worthy to come tonight or not? Yeah. Now I know that you're going to do Kiddush. What a Kiddush. Your wife is going to tell him, your husband will tell him, move aside, move. I'm going to become partner of God. Listen to the partner, listen. <laughs> now you have to listen to me because I'm not anymore, your husband. I'm not anymore a son of God. I am a partner of God. Kavod. <laughs> Give me a couple of Every time I'm walking, you have to stand up. Now you're talking to the brother of God. You're going into business with different attitude. You're not kind of going in like a sardine, like a fish. You're going in like a whale. What's the size of the whale? 30% of the world. Without your wife. Yes, yes. Without your wife. 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 Without I'm going to touch the topic of today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It was everything was only introduction to the topic. Wow. Yes, I know, I know. If last night we spoke 200, two hours and 45 minutes, tonight I will do it much shorter. <laughs> if this is how listen to this. Today, today is a few tips, few advice. I don't know if we're going to match the whole 10, but we're going to try to give as many uh, advice, as many uh, tips for education of children, and I believe that these tips apply also for Shalom Bait. Uh, slowly, we're going to touch a little more detail-wise how to deal with children, how to convince children to go to sleep, from small, small, smaller request to big request of having children going off the derech, how exactly we, can, we have to deal with them. With the Shem help, we're going to touch a little more education, uh, education and nachat and joy from our children. Because if there's anything important in our life, if there's anything important in our life, it's our children. Ask every parent, why are you working for your children? Why you came to the world for my children? Every parent have a dreams to see children succeed in life. Even more succeed for men. The Gemara said, a rabbi and a father are never jealous in their own children or students. Why? Because you want them even to be more rich and more successful and more rabbi. But then if your son is going to become a rabbi, are you going to feel bad? You know what you're going to tell him? You don't have to go to collect money. Abba is going to build you the building. Mazi, Shiva, Eish, Kapara, a whole street, Yeshiva, 500 students, that's all. Mula Badalov, Eish, Eish, find, find the place, find the place, Mula Badalov, bullshit. Emmanuel, are you going to be jealous if you have you? If your child is going to become one of the biggest harm in our community? The opposite, right? This is the child. If we're doing everything, I'm going to give you a few tips for children. 
The first one is, in life between a husband and wife, and between parents and children, is not what you said, is how do you said. I told you that many times. It's so important the way that you solve something. You can put food and uh, a dirty plate, a dirty plate, you know, sometimes, do you know what's the difference between a husband and a wife when they're washing dishes? Do not ever send your husband to wash dishes because he's making a favor. He put water in it like this. <laughs> With the hand. He doesn't even put the, the, the sponge. That is good. That is bad. That is. A wife, it looks like an enemy. She scrapped it like this. 20 minutes. It came cleaner from the beginning. You know what's the difference? The difference is a wife. After one week, the plate disappeared. Every time she took 10%, 10% home. 10 days later, you we know, have to buy more dishes. A husband, the, the plate can exist 200 years, Baruch Hashem. Only what the person wants. And after that, he put more food. He said, what do you want? It's clean. Now, if you put in food, vegetable or food in a dirty plate, what embarrassment is that? It's embarrassment. It's not what you solve. It's how do you solve it. It's not what you tell your wife. I will give you an example. Listen to this. It's all when you put, I don't know if you know Hebrew so well, but it was a man, it was a woman that wrote to the husband, Tizrok et apach zeven. Now, it depends where you put the dot. One way to put the Tizrok et apach, throw the, the, the garbage, and then you put that zeven, meaning new garbage, refer to the husband. The husband may, may, be, may be upset. Or the other way is, Tizrok et apach zeven. Please, my husband, can you throw the, the, the garbage? So, another example. Listen to the example. It was a son that sent, you know, he went in, I'm talking about years ago, he went into Israel for the yeshiva. And his father lived in uh, America. The whole time, the only way to talk is either fax or either, uh, how do you call it, uh, men. Men. He sent a letter to his father. His father was an ignorant man. He didn't know how to read so he gave it in to this guy. The guy is reading it. Abba, give me money. I need it. What the chutzpah? <laughs> he didn't say hello. He didn't say, my dear father, I love you. What the? He didn't send him a penny. One month later, I get another letter. But this time, the guy that was there in the, in the mailbox was not there. It was a woman over there. She knew how to read. He said to give it. So she looked. She said, Abba, please, give me money. I really need it. The guy started to cry. He said, wow, my son, what a chutzpah. I didn't give him money last time. What's the difference? The woman ready. Right. <laughs> How do you solve it? The money. You see, you come to your wife and you say, please, uh, give me breakfast. You're going to see breakfast in the pictures, Kapar, in Facebook. She will send you pictures in Facebook. Or TikTok, again, okay, now. All these things, she's going to send you pictures. Talk to me and TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> selfie, selfie. Do selfie in breakfast. Today, people is going to a restaurant, they make selfie. The whole world have to know what they eat. What do they care what you eat? No, the whole world. So, you, but if you come to your wife and you wake up in the morning and you say, Jonam Bazam. Jonam, Jonam. My beloved wife. You're the greatest gift that I have. And I like it. But the lucky man I am. Can we sit together and eat breakfast? What's <laughs> breakfast? She will make you sunny size up, sunny size down, Shakespeare with love. She's going to make you cappuccino, mucuccino, chococino, everything you want. She's going to bring you breakfast on the bed. She's singing. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I hope you're good, you're good. I'm there. It's good. My husband is a partner. I'm going to so. The partner of God, I love it. It was good, it was good. This is one. You see, what you're dealing with your children, Shlomo Melech made one of the most difficult books that exist, the Book of Mishlei. Book of Mishlei is a book full of rebuke. For some reason, this book was so easy to swallow. Do you know why? Every statement starts, my son, Beni, im chacham libcha, samach libi gamani, my son, my son, my son. How many times you hear rabbis? My dear brothers and sisters. When Yaakov Avinu came in, Yaakov Avinu came to this Lavan, what's the first thing that he saw? 
He saw these people that steal in money. These people that had zero respect. And Yaakov Avinu come to rebuke them. Who are you, a Jew that come from no one, come to rebuke us? How come they didn't kill him? You know what the Gemara said? Because he was, he was using one word. You know what's the word? Achai, my brother. A minute that you're telling a person, my brother, my love, my son, when you're coming in to rebuke your son, you have to use the right word. The first advice and education of children, the first advice in Shalom Bayit is to do what? Is not how to say it. It's not what to say. Is how do you say it. You have to be very careful the way that you put, the way that you represent something to him to bring him with love. Second, how that this woman, she saw the husband, she saw the child being behaved, it's not bad. She looked at the child and she said, my dear son, you're such a genius. You're a brilliant human being. What you did it was not you, is yet Sarah. You are perfect, but it's Sarah, we have to fight him. Don't listen to you, you see what she did? She flipped it. She didn't tell him you're stupid. She didn't tell him you're a tipesh, you're a ganav, you're a thief, you're a liar. How many times when I was child make us upset? You're liars. You call me a liar. I'm going to prove it to you. What's the meaning to be liars? Gentlemen, the way that we represent our children, the way that we transfer a message, we have to be very careful. Second one is Tinuk. Many of us came from a very difficult life. And you know what we're trying to do? We're trying to avoid our children to have the same. What do we do? I will do everything for my children. I will fix the bed for them. I will put the food. I will clean after them. Ladies and gentlemen, spoiled creates a monster later on. How that Shlomo said, Chotzech Shifto Sone Beno. I one time came into us. I used to live in Kirat Malachi. It was my neighbor, my neighbor on the fourth floor. Thank God, he was very well, well uh, sitting, money wise. And his own daughters, even though he had enough money, his own daughters was washing the floors of the buildings. The building, tradition in Israel. Every day, some different uh, neighbor uh, in charge of washing the whole stairs. You know, uh, sponge up. They have somebody that's washing. One time I came to him and I said, Mr. So and so, shame on you. I'm not counting how much money you have, but you have enough money to buy the building in cash. What is this embarrassment? Your daughter is going to wash the. What is that? You're, you're missing money? I mean, you need donation? I said, Rabbi Wagner, do you think that I'm doing it because I have no money? I want to teach my own daughters money doesn't fly in the air. From young age, they have to sweat. To teach our children responsibility to wash dishes. Ima is not a slave. It's nice that you're going to teach your boys and your girls, even your boys. Because one day they're going to get married and the wife will be pregnant. Or, especially in our generation, that we have all this movement of women rights. Women rights doesn't mean only the women have rights. Women deserve to have rights in our generation. You know why? Because she brings 50% of the salary. When in Bukhara, no offense guys to you guys, that you like to eat the whole cakes. You want your wife to bring money and to act like Bukhara. You cannot. Jump from both. Either you walk in and you're the only one that brings, and then your wife will cook, will cook, will clean, will wash, or either she's walking and you're half and half in the house. No, now this the is the rule of the Rambam, not right? my rule. The woman is 100%. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's this? The guy's in Kolo. This is different. This is dedication of God. And a guy in the calling <coughs> know how to become a partner. Just the opposite. You don't have to teach him that. You, his wife doesn't even have to ask. They teach them in the, in the kolel how to become a mensch, how to come and help. Gentlemen, you have to teach your own children from young age. Ima is not a slave. It's not the job of Ima to clean your room. You wake up, you fix your bed. Don't let your children be spoiled because you had a little difficult life. Oh, you, you, if you need to go to psychology, go to psychology. But don't let your future children need a psychology later on because they are spoiled children. The second mistake that all of us is doing is we spent our, we, we spoiled our children unlimited. Anything. I saw a guy, every child he had, he bought three carriage. What do you need three? I saw a guy in our community made a celebration for his own 
a child, both day, three years old. He doesn't even know what is his name. The child is looking like this, driving in the most luxury car. Most, this car outside costs one million dollars. Over there is a plastic car, you know, uh, this car that driving. Driving, this is what the father and his nonsense. He spent fifty thousand dollars and Elagio, Balagio and all the friends for a uh, uh, humulated three years old. Lost it completely. That children is a dangerous children to the world. A spoiled children is a dangerous children. They have no rules, no regulations. Chosech, shifto, sonne, beno. Shlomo Amelich used very tough word. You don't educate your child, you hate him. No, no, you don't a good father. You are the worst father exists. You are the worst mother exists. No, children have to have education. You can do it in a nice way, like we said before. You can say, my son, my jonam, my love, my sweetheart, whatever you want to call him. But you have to do it. You have to teach your children certain rules and regulation. Number, discipline. This is the right word. Discipline. You see, in life, this is one of the ways that the Torah is teaching us. We see, a, a child, a Jewish child, he is going to eat. What do you have to do? No? Before Baha? Before washing hand? Thank you, Ima. Thank you. Before thank you, Ima? Thank you, Abba? Before thank you, partner of God? What else? No. Check if the food is kosher. Right? You forgot this one. You're going out? You see, my children are going out to a mall and they see ice cream. Abba, Abba! This ice cream is kosher? They don't ask if they, this is a, if you can eat. This ice cream is kosher? Yeah. You said no? Nothing. <laughs> How can a child no. stop himself? <laughs> and a regular child, if you see ice cream, you're already on the floor. AKG, they need 911. He's fainting. <laughs> 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 you This rabbi, rabbi, what's his name? In the second, I remember. I heard it from this rabbi. He's amazing. He said it was a family in Ben Brak, sixteen children. Do you know what's the benefit of having sixteen children? Torah is teaching you discipline. You doing kiddush. Not only that, you have to wait for the bracha. Shalom aleichem, and then eshet chayim. And some people said bar yochai. You know some Sephardim they had bar yochai another family. And the son, the son, the children, the back and the they're getting closer and closer. They almost, they need to eat. And then the father is doing Kiddush. Now, after the father, who is drinking? The mother. The mother. After the mother? Oldest, the youngest. After the oldest? The next. The guy had to wait 18 stops. And <laughs> you know how much yoga he did? Oh, he's sitting down like this. Why? You have to wait five minutes, only to pass through the wine. Disciplined. From young age, the Torah is teaching us. What a beautiful Torah. Number three, to be cl clear in what you said. <clears throat> to be clear. The message has to be clear. I will ask you, how come, how come, listen to the scenario. Listen to the scenario. The scenario is like this. How come when they have a closet, a closet, Coca-Cola closet, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, whatever you put. And you tell your child, do not touch the Coca-Cola. A minute later, you open the Coca-Cola. You see, children, a minute that you're not in the kitchen, it's moving automatically. The leg, the leg is moving, he's taking the Coca-Cola and drinking. And when you have a closet of bleach, bleach, and the child is a oh, closet of electric or gas, and you tell your child, no, the child will never touch it. How come? Did you ever ask yourself? You're serious with the word. A child can differentiate it if you know is no, or if you know is yes. Mm -hmm. Don't touch the coconut, but nothing happen if you're gonna touch it. Uh, but when it's coming into a fire, whoa, whoa. Do not touch the fire! You're gonna why you, why you can see the pressure that's coming out from your eyes? You can see the fire. Be clear in your mass and your message. Do not give Double message to a child. Confusing messages, confusing children. But if a kid won't understand. What is it? If a kid won't understand. No, no, the children are the awareness. Depends on which age. I'm not talking about one. 
In the age of a child that understand, from four or five years old, a child is able to understand well, and to see. Depends in which age. Like a Already two years old, a child understands when he says no, is no. He understands that when he says no, is no. Yes. He can verify, depends how you said, and depends in the way the expression of the face. Number four. Use opportunity. Use opportunity meaning any opportunity that you have between a husband and wife to spend together. You're coming back home and have this tradition. You have 10 minutes. Take your wife out. The children sleeping. Use opportunity. You're coming back home and you sit with your children. They're coming back. Instead of being busy on your phone, put your phone away and take call each one of your children seven minutes. Seven to 10 minutes. Rabbi Lassi, beautiful. Rabbi Lassi is the one, yes. Beautiful. Deserve to mention his names. Rabbi Lassi made it beautiful. You see, you bring your child, grab a petinity, and every moment you have, I'm, I'm doing it short. Um, number five, Lakov. You know what I mean, Lakov? Lakov is Israel style. Anyone here know what's the difference between El Al and any other airline? How do you know where is your in Elan? Where is your in Delta? Well, American? No Israeli. Israeli. Where is no line? The no stand on line. Shabbat, attitude. One of them have line. The other one is pyramid. You know which one is pyramid? Elan. Nobody can stand in line. Everybody cut in each other. <laughs> this is, how do we call it in Hebrew? La'akof. La'akof meaning to skip the line. We are an export of skipping the line. Israelis by nature, we cannot see lines. We see lines. Huh? No, my father is in the beginning. <laughs> your father, Ahmad Kuna, passed away 20 years ago. Which your father? Your father is already in Ulam Abba. Which line is he? He's in the line in Ghanedin. Which line? No, he's in the line. You see? Moreover, I will tell you this one. I will tell you this one. La Kof meaning, you have a opportunity in Shabbat, if you want to teach something to your children, to share stories. If let's say your daughter didn't dress with Sinyut, one way is to come to them and to say, this is in your hands. Is another way to your daughter, to your wife, or to your husband. You can share a message to a story, to a different topics, and let them understand it by themselves. A beautiful message. Read a story about Sinyut. Read a story about not speaking during the film. Read a story about Lashon Hara. And come to Shabbat, he said this in, like, like coincident. Don't do it right away after she's speaking. Like coincident. You know how many times, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting phone calls from my husband before the shiur. I'm getting phone calls from a woman, from a wife before the shiur. Rabbi, please, can you speak this week about these topics? Now, even the woman doesn't realize that I'm speaking. Because I never start with the same topic. I start with different topics. And we move in, and we move in, and then we get to the topic and we're coming out. And in the meantime, I give the message. The guy that needs to hear the message ordered. They don't be offended. They don't feel that I'm going direct against them. It was not the rabbi against me. They don't feel embarrassment. Behind the scenes. One of the ways to educate children, or to give message to a child or father, a wife or husband, not to go direct. Gvish or kef, you know what you mean, gvish or kef? A road, they have a, like a center, a gvish, how do you say gvish? Central, like detour. No, no. Like uh, gvish, how do you say gvish? Sidewalk. No, street. They have a street, and then they have detour, you call it? Yeah. A detour. Yeah. Meaning, I don't know, shortcut or... But you're going around, when you have a traffic, what did they tell you? Go from this. Why detours? Detour meaning, you're going around. Not necessarily short, but maybe it's short because it's no traffic. But is a way, it's always better to come in details. Number six, Akshava, a woman and a man, especially a woman. And children need you to listen to them. We're not really listening to our children. We're not really. Uh, we listen to the children, by the way. Sit down and listen to the children. Put the phone away. Repeat what your children tell you. Wow, in the school you got 80? Wow. You know what? One of the most Excitement moment, and, 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 and a respectable moment. I will call it a respectable moment. And I'm always, always impressed. One of my students, may God will give him a long life and unlimited success, was the owner of Children's Place. I'm still going to him at least once a week, or sometimes once a month, sometimes yes. And you know, when I'm coming into his office, 
you take pen and paper and you write everything that I said. Not only that he put his phone away, he doesn't answer nothing. Not only that he gives me full attention, he's the mother of wealth. He's not the well, he's the mother of wealth. He's sitting down with pen and paper and he writes everything that I said. Imagine yourself, you're sitting like this to your wife, and whatever she share with you, say, wow, well, met. they did you in the school like this and this? Ah, this is what's happened in the school? You're, why not the guys listening? How many times, ladies, your husband is listening, and a man said, what did I say? I don't know, you spoke about the son. <laughs> you said maybe one word, son. It was a sunny day, this is what you remember. He was busy in a whole completely different. Happened to all of us. We're not really listening. Listen to your children. Children and parent, and wife and husband need to be listened. Need to be listened. Number eight. Seven. Who are you, Omer? Who are you, Omer, meaning? Before you come to his children to tell them what to do, do it yourself. You tell a child not to smoke, don't smoke yourself. You tell a child not to eat Coca-Cola, not to drink Coca-Cola, it's bad for you. Do not drink Coca-Cola yourself. In my house, we don't have Coca-Cola in any soft drinks for the last five years. We have only, okay, because it's a diabetes, <coughs> diabetes reason, sugar, sugar reason, but we have only a seltzer with different tastes, and my children is okay with this, Baruch Hashem, thank God. Life is amazing, they're growing up, normal. And why do we have to give them so much poison? But we tell them, Coke is bad for you, and a minute later you see outside, drinking a whole, a whole. This food is good, good, bad for you, and a minute later. Do not contradict your actions. What if it's a Action, hypocrisy, how do you call it? Hypocrisy. Not only that. Uh, what if it's coffee or something you need? Coffee or no, no. Gatorade. This is different. You know? It's not bad. It's not bad. A certain age is. Coca-Cola, because of the diabetes, because of the sugar, and because of the chemicals. Coffee is not bad. Coffee... It has caffeine. Yeah, but how much caffeine are you drinking? Once a day? Yeah. And it's not the age. That one you can explain them. Age-wise, it's not good for you. Coca-Cola has nothing to do with age. Coca-Cola in any age you drink. Coca-Cola, the minute you give them the taste, you will drink only Coca-Cola. You will forget about the water, you will forget about anything. Any soft drinks. Um, don't go details. I'm just telling you. Give them Coca-Cola. But don't tell them not to drink when you drink it. You want to hear the mat, even coffee. You tell them no coffee, don't drink coffee in the front of his eyes. Do not tell them no when you drink it. Because this is what we call hypocrite. Don't contradict yourself in front of him. He might later on understand when he's going to go up that coffee is age. My son understands. He never asked me coffee. They eat coffee in the young age. But at the same time, also in the young age, they will never ask you cigarette. You can smoke in the young age because... But the minute that they get to the age 15, 16, when this temptation of smoking is coming, you cannot anymore tell them not to drink coffee because of coffee, or not to smoke because of cigarette, because in that moment, you don't have any more value. It's not what you said, it's what you act. What if someone has allergies or like a diet? So explain, my dear child, I'm doing it because I have allergies. Because the doctor recommend me to do it. This way you can see, don't, you cannot do it. I'm doing it not because I want it, because I have allergy, and it's good for allergy. A child is not foolish. He understands when you explain. Last but not least, and this is the most important, with this I'm going to end. Fila, fila, fila. Ladies and gentlemen, Khenur Khiladim, Shalom Bayit, or anything and want in life. Depends on one word, the fila. Which part of the tefillah? I will tell you which part. And you're going to remember it from now until the rest of your life. And I'm doing it every day. Every day. They have twice or three times. I'm going to give you tonight twice. I believe that once we did it, I will do it once again. You see, ladies and gentlemen, you know what's Birkot HaShachar? Birkot HaShachar is when everyone that wake up is doing the morning blessing. One of the blessings is Birkot HaTorah. Birkot HaTorah meaning before you study Torah, Rebbe, you have to make Birkot. The same way before you drink your mother, you're making shakul. Before you study. One of the blessings is the second blessing of Bikata Torah. And this Listen to this. Please, God, make the Torah sweet in our mouth. And make sure that our children and our grandchildren, when you see children, 
have in mind the name of all your children. When I say children, I have in mind. I have the mind of my five children. My brother Ronin, most likely taken 20 minutes, nine names. And each name, each child, two names. So Baruch Hashem, 18. Ah, some of them shalosh? Yeah. Okay, no, no, but in this case. יש לך שלוש שמות? לא, בקייס שלי, בגלל שלא היית בברית, אז שמו שלוש שמות. אה, אוקיי, ברוך השם. Some people have three names. So then, but you have to mention, again, when? When you said וצאצאינו. What does it mean צאצאינו in English? Our children. וצאצאי צאצאינו מינין? Our grandchildren. This one, when you are בובו, you have to mention all the names of your grandchildren. בבוש. Yes. And this is one. Second time is, second time, listen to the second times. In that fila, we said, Uva Letzion, go ahead, right? Yeah. When exactly we said Uva Letzion? After Shacharit, in Shemona Esre. We said Uva, uh, after Shacharit, after Hashesh Vibetecha, we said, what did we say? Asher Alech Udvara, Udvara Esher Sam Tepicha. Lo Yamushu. The word of Torah that I gave you will never leave your mouth Mipi Zaracha, what's Zaracha? Your children. And this moment, have in mind the name of your children. Have in mind all the name of your children. Or Mipi Zera Zaracha, and if you're Bobosh, have in mind all your grandchildren. This is two places in the Tfilah. Pray all day long for the education, because the education of children is miracles. I can give you tips all day long. I can teach you how to behave. Bottom line between you and me, it's all nice, but nothing will help you if not for God. Because our generation, one bad movies, one bad friends can ruin 20 years of education. So it's no tips and no secrets. The secret is to pray. To pray to Hashem that our children will be successful. Yeah. That they're going to be accepted in the Shiva. Yeah. I want to end, I want to, to end by saying thank you very much. Thank you very much for all of you, for always coming. Thank you very much for um, Emmanuel and his wife. The Almighty God will give you a long life and health life for everything that you're doing in our community. And in my life personal, I do have to say thank you. Our Devar Torah once again was the Lord Nishmat Eliyahu Ben Baruch Ben Eliyahu Ben Baruch Baruch Yosef Ben Ben Batya and Baruch Bat Sara and also the Moravim Michael Ben Esther Panir Bat Chavti Ruach Hashem Tachem Megan Eden Tehen Nishmatam Tzura Bat Tzura Chaim Please I'm going to ask all of you to stand up I'm going to do right now Ashkava Yes. תודה הן וכל השובים במים בכלל החסליחות וכן יהי רצון ונאמר אמן בגן עדן תהיה מנוחתם רבי חנן מרישה אומר רצה הקדוש ברוך הוא שכנסה לפי חבל המתור ותבות שנאמר אדוני החפץ ומת עד יגדיל תורה וידיר קדיש אמן 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 ערבית רבותיי, אין לי וואן וואן טוסטי, ערבית, פליס, פליס.
my YouTube channel. Who? Stand, stand, stand. Ten people are with Rabu Tai. Guys, 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 we need Minya. Six people, seven people, Nana. Yeah. Yeah.